what's up everybody, it's Aggression here. Did a little video on my journey this morning. I've got my horrible standard levers back. So I decided to return uh, the aftermarket ones. They were, they're a lot longer than the standard. I wanted the same length as the standard, obviously, but just an aftermarket set. Uh, but unfortunately, the ones I got were a lot bloody longer. Uh, and they kind of protruded over the edge of the bar. See these, if I pull them back, they're about level with the edge of the edge of the uh, bar and the grip, but my uh, aftermarket ones kind of hung over about an inch, and I didn't really like that. Uh, I could have just moved this in, but there's no movement really on this one. There you can see I've already moved the right hand lever in a lot. But yeah, I just didn't, didn't really like it. Um, and they've kind of kindly said that I can uh, return my long levers uh, in exchange for some shorties uh, so I figured that would kind of be the best thing to do um, so yeah I'm gonna go for that anyway, the moon's still out um, got, a, got somewhat of a topic to talk about today I'm not really decided on how many topics just kind of go along and see how many I can fit in on the journey. Um, kind of number one for people is a theory test. Because I know I was really edgy when I had my theory test coming up. I was really worried, and and still after all the all the practicing, I was still a bit edgy on if I was going to pass or fail. Uh, and there's no reason to be edgy about it at all, guys. Really is so bloody simple. Uh, I mean, I think I had around four different uh, kind of mock test apps uh, to practice with, but I mean, they all, and I kind of noticed this very early on, they all ask about four questions about uh, lorries indicating one direction and then moving to the opposite side of the lane from what they're indicating to. Uh, obviously you should keep well back because they're giving themselves extra room. Uh, but just kind of be uh, aware that I think in my actual theory test, um, I only had two questions like that, that they reworded just slightly differently. But I mean, most of the te test apps I used, they, they kind of reworded that question about five times. And that was always a problem for me, uh, I realised early on, because I kind of panicked and thought, well, I know for a fact the DVLA are not going to uh, do do that that many times. So I got kind of a bit worried and thought, bloody hell, I'm going to have kind of four odd questions that I've never even encountered in my life. Uh, and I did have a few that I'd never even seen before. Um, but I mean, the main thing is, guys, just try and try and improve your score or a new test app and try and get kind of near enough 50 out of 50 every time. I mean, I think that's what I was getting towards the end. If I ever got any wrong, it'd be maybe one or two questions wrong. Um, just silly ones, really. But yeah, just make sure you uh, just keep practicing. I didn't really practice a lot, to be fair, but uh, I don't know. I kind of feel that I'm able to store a lot in my brain at one any given time. Uh, so yeah, I managed to I managed to pass my theory test first time. I think I did get a few questions wrong. I can't remember exactly how many, uh, but obviously it didn't hinder me passing. So let's not bore you with the details that I can't even remember anyway. Um, another thing is the hazard perception. Um, I obviously was aware that I had to take it, but I wasn't aware of kind of how how it worked. All it is, I think you're showing about 14 clips, um, and I think they either have one or two hazards in them, and you've just got to identify the hazards. Uh, there is no uh, direct click point, you don't have a cursor, so you just click. Um, when you see the hazard, the earlier you see it, the higher score you get. Uh, you don't get kind of a um, taken off you for for clicking um, the wrong hazard or not the right hazard because obviously you can see things that you may think is a hazard but they don't actually develop into one 
um, but also you can uh, you can also be kind of penalised for um, for bloody hell, it's nice and busy today, isn't it? You can also be penalised for. Um, For clicking multiple times, sorry, for clicking kind of a ridiculous over amount of times. Uh, so just be aware of that and don't kind of click like a lunatic thinking that you're going to get top marks because you will. I think you lose uh, all marks for that that particular scene. Uh, so obviously, yeah, be aware of that. Uh, other than that, really, theory test is nothing to worry about. It's really simple. Um, visor's getting nice and foggy. I still haven't had a chance to sort out my anti-fog visor. I don't know why it's not stopping fog. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, guys, I'll give you a quick rundown of a module one, which again is just really simple, obvious stuff. I mean, I'm sure anyone that's intending to do it has already kind of looked it up and seen what it entails. Um, and all I can really say is the same as they would say on the test day. Make sure to do kind of all your on-road observations, keep that in your mind, because I did the same thing. I kept it all in my mind all the way, my journey there, um, sitting there because I arrived quite early. I kept reminding myself, kept reminding myself, kept reminding myself. Um, and then the first thing I did on the first two uh, manoeuvres was I just drove off without doing any checks, uh, which I've got kind of light faults for. Um, I still pass, but of course it's silly little things. Uh, so yeah, that's something to be aware of. Uh, you've got to uh, try and avoid putting your feet down as well. I think on most of the manoeuvres you're not allowed to put your feet down. Uh, yeah, the other thing is just practice and get some some decent control over your bike. Uh, if you're doing it on your own bike, of course, learn learn your own bike. I feel that it really helped me, the fact that obviously I was riding uh, my own bike for a good few months. And then I did my test on my own bike, so that, that allowed me to really understand uh, what I was capable of and what my own bike was capable of uh, and then obviously of course I've got a, a certain amount of trust in my bike not falling over at a certain speed so I know kind of how far I can push myself and my own bike uh, obviously some people that's not an option for some people that they can't take their own bike maybe they maybe they don't have one at the time maybe they're looking to get one after they complete their module one and two uh, but I mean if you do have the option it is a lot easier I think it works out cheaper as well uh, I mean I've had people say like kind of why not just pay X a man to hire a bike and then if you crash as long as you've paid the uh, whatever you've got to pay the kind of fee uh, then you've got nothing to worry about uh, if you crash obviously on the wrong poxy way. Um, yeah, so I mean that's just, that's the basics really. Just kind of keep that in mind and be wary of it. I can't see shit. I have to go. Yep, all good. Uh, That's just the, the, the kind of basics to bear in mind, really. I mean, all the things are kind of pretty obvious. Uh, but I know it helps to kind of, kind of have a lot of positive reinforcement uh, and just find out kind of exactly what, what it's like. Because, I mean, I, I was never satisfied with any information I got uh, kind of regarding my tests. So I always wanted to know more and more and more and more and more. 
uh, just so that I was 100% certain on uh, what was going on. Module 2 is just kind of self-explanatory really, you've just got an instructor following you, I'm trying to fucking sort out this shitty mirror, uh, yeah you've just got an instructor following you and uh, you've just got to demonstrate good road sense and ability and control I think, uh, yeah just to show um, kind of good good manoeuvrability of the machine, uh, show that you're comfortable and content, yeah, and that you can you can obviously travel safely uh, to and from your destinations without causing, yeah, any difficulties for yourself or any dangers or hazards, and yeah, then that's, that, that test kind of all done and dusted, really. me there just make sure obviously on the road you you uh you really exaggerate all your checks kind of eye your shoulder checks and your mirror checks and that just make sure you uh yeah you kind of really over exaggerate them uh just to make the instructor fully aware that you are um kind of doing all the appropriate checks regularly to to make you aware of the road i mean Sometimes I really don't do many checks, but I mean, at the moment I'll keep checking in my rear mirrors, or my, well, my uh, bar end mirrors, to just see what's behind me, uh, kind of vehicle-wise, because then that gives me a gauge on the road. Um, so for instance, obviously this car behind me, or this 4x4 behind me, if it disappears, it's either turned a different direction, or it's kind of in my blind areas. Uh, so then obviously then I know to bear in mind if I'm about to change direction to just make sure I double check them blind errors for that car that's obviously disappeared from behind me. Uh, obviously it could have moved into my blind area like for instance now. There it is. It was in my blind spot. So obviously I had no view on where that car was then. Until I did all my kind of checks. And then I saw it again. Um, so yeah, just the basics to bear in mind really guys, just really, it's like what, uh, what I've been told a few times, it's not, it's not even really a test to be fair because it, they're observing how you drive and how you uh, navigate and kind of should be responsibly uh, driving the roads. That's, that's all they're, they're kind of evaluating if you're safe or if you're a danger to yourself and other people. If they deem that to be so, then you, you'll fail when you'll have to have more training or more practice uh, to make yourself a safer driver. That's, that's really the whole in, intention of the test. Yeah, so just check my mirrors there as I was braking as well. I like to do that a lot. I've seen too many videos of nice bikes getting rear-ended at the moment kind of panics me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, just the obvious, really. <sighs> God, it feels so strange using these levers again. But I think that's it for now, guys. Probably a really poor video with all the rain that's on my visor. There's probably a lot on the camera lens, but uh, the main intention for this video was kind of more audio advice than uh, visual advice. Even though we all know people like to, to watch what I'm driving and where I'm driving to. Uh, so I apologise kind of ahead for that if you can't really see much. 
Uh, but yeah, that's about it, guys. So I'll leave it at that for now, and I'll catch you all in a bit.